Hey, what's going on guys? It's Dan, back again with another video. If you're new here, my name's Dan. I do videos on men's fashion and costume design of movies. In today's video, we are going to be going through the movie Sound of Metal. And before we get into this video, if you could subscribe, hit like, that would mean the world to me. Share it with a friend, that'd be sick. I love your faces. Let's get on to the video. So in today's video, we are going to be doing Sound of Metal, which was directed by Darius Martyr. So the overview for the movie is, while doing road gigs with his girlfriend and bandmate Lou, played by Olivia Cook, drummer from the band Black Gannon, aka Ruben, played by Riz Ahmed, loses his hearing. After going to the doctor to see what's wrong, he finds out that he's becoming deaf. He has two options, let his hearing deteriorate and become fully deaf, or get cochlear implants. Although wanting to go through with the second option, it is extremely expensive and not covered by his insurance. While this is happening, Lou begins to worry about Ruben and that he might relapse. After talking to Ruben, she convinces him to go to an all deaf shelter for recovering drug addicts, where he will attempt to cope with his situation. So for the costume designer of Sound of Metal, it was done by two designers, but we're gonna be focusing on Megan Stark Evans, who has worked on movies such as Extremely Wicked, Shocking, Evil, and Biome, Uncle Frank, and of course, Sound of Metal. She grew up in Kansas City and got into film from the movie Wizard of Oz, which is kind of ironic. And she ended up going to college at uh, Loyola Marymount University for TV production, but then eventually found her way into costume design. Now, I'm not just gonna take you through the movie and take you through each piece. I wanna answer this one question, and that question is, did Megan Stark Evans correctly represent the clothing and aesthetic of the punk and hardcore scene? And although I'm not 100% sure the specific subgenre of music they play in the movie, I gather that they're somewhere in the punk scene, hardcore, and actually, Megan ended up getting a lot of help and advice and even some pieces from Sean Powell, who is in the punk scene and is a band member of the band Surfboard. Again, there's a lot of subgenres of the punk scene, but the ones, the things that overlap are the punk scene heavily relies on DIYing their clothing, whether it be screen printing their own t-shirts or doing some visible mending, anything you can think of that changes their garment, that's what the punk scene likes to do and they end up getting a lot of their clothes from charity shops or thrift stores. Even from friends, they often borrow each other's clothing, uh, according to Sean. So let's get into the clothing and the style of both characters, Lou and Ruben. When you first meet uh, Lou and Ruben, Lou has bleached eyebrows and reddish, di reddish dyed hair, while Ruben has somewhat of a mullet that's bleached, but it's uh, been growing through and most of their wardrobe looks pretty worn in and raggedy in a good way, I would say. Not heavily raggedy, but something that looks like it's been through the, the ringer. When we first meet Lou, uh, the first couple scenes, she's in, she's in a fishnet spaghetti strap slip dress with just some black underwear and Doc Martin boots. And fishnet is definitely something that has been seen in the punk scene and is still seen today. Uh, after those scenes where she's seen in the slip dress, she's wearing a lot of like v-necks and mostly jersey type shirts. For example, she's wearing a white and red long sleeve v-neck that sort of has this aesthetic of a football jersey, sleeves rolled up. She's also seen in a blue and yellow uh, like jersey and as well as a light blue and white jersey. And for Ruben, at first the first couple scenes we see him in, he's either shirtless or in a white tank top, and throughout the movie, he's basically seen in one pair of jeans and a pair of boots, which for the jeans is a pair of Levi's, they look like some uh, slim straight Levi's, I don't really know exactly what number it was, and it looks to be like a pair of jungle boots, possibly Rothko or a brand like that, 
do Levi's action. Both Levi's and the boots were new, but were made to look more worn in and old. And you may not know this, but there's a certain amount of time that is allotted for aging and dyeing the clothes, and they only ended up having three days and ended up needing to do more than just the three days on their own time to get the correct authentic feel so megan was saying that they were running over this pair of levi's to create a more authentic and like worn in feel which is pretty interesting and like i was saying before in this first scene that we see him in an actual outfit he's wearing a faded black uh ripped up t-shirt i'm not really sure what the graphic is there looks to be like some two sort of characters and then some red lettering could be a movie could be a band i'm not really sure but the graphic uh, in the scenes that you see looks pretty cool. And a little note I should add is, Megan said that in every piece there's some visible mending that they recreated or created in each piece that isn't really picked up by the camera per se, but was definitely made and intended to create a sense of that punk scene. And for the backstory between Lou and uh, Ruben, they, because they are in the in the music industry, they are definitely audiophiles. They love music and that's mostly what they care about. So a lot of the band t-shirts that are worn in this in this movie is not like Metallica or, or, or something like a popular, like Kiss or another popular band, but they wanted some more like deep cuts because music is their life. So to go through the band t-shirts that were in this movie in no particular order, we have the rudimentary penny shirt, which is a British anarcho uh, punk band that was formed in 1980. It is the cacophony shirt, and it has this relaxed fit, you know, slightly dropped shoulders. There's uh, light distressing and rips at the collar and throughout the garment. We also have this gizm tank top, which is a Japanese hardcore punk band that was also um, formed in the 80s and it is a photo tee of the band playing at a show. And then we have this band, which I'm most likely gonna butcher, but bear with me. Einstrzende Neubauten. Einstrzende Neubauten? Something like that. It's a German experimental group that also started in the uh, 1980s. And uh, I love this graphic. It's a really cool one. You don't even get to see the full graphic, but you can see that on the top it says Einstrzende, and then it starts to have the graphic of their logo, which if you look at the band, you can tell which it is. And again, slightly dropped shoulders. It's more of a relaxed fit. I really like the, this might be too inside baseball for clothing, but I really liked the sleeve lengths of all the t-shirts. They're not like, even though he's wearing oversized garments, the sleeve cat or like the sleeves are very short or decently short and it just drapes on him really nicely it's not like short sleeves that are down to his elbows it's something that's the cut is was definitely well thought out and then you have this um youth of today hoodie which is a straight-edged hardcore band that was formed in 1985 now ruben obviously is a recovering addict so I can definitely see why he was resorting or going to that sort of music and into that band. It has uh, both front and back graphics. The front, it has a fist with the X mark, uh, marking that it is a straight edge band. And it says Youth of Today. And then on the back, it has a photo of the band playing with the words Break Down the Walls. Now, lastly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover for the band t-shirts is actually my favorite. And it's not even worn by Ruben. It's worn by Lou in only one scene. It is this Motorhead t-shirt, the England tee, but instead of um, English, it is in Arabic. It's a white t-shirt, single stitched. It's pretty oversized for Lou. I think it looks really awesome on her, and I think the graphic itself is really cool. It is a nice twist on a classic. So because they're touring artists, they're also going from place to place, and I think Megan wanted to represent that and show that, which is why they have a lot of obscure graphics that uh, Ruben and Lou wear. So one of them being uh, this jockey tee worn both by Lou and Ruben. And that's another thing that Megan wanted to show that they're sharing clothes. I mean, they're living in this van or Winnebago or whatever it is, but they, basically other clothes are on a pile and they're just picking it up and wearing it. For Ruben, it's slim fit. 
this is one of the shirts where you can see some visible mending when Ruben is sitting down on that RV. Others, again, like I talked about before, it's that Wisco Industries jersey that is worn by Lou. It's light blue and white. And then another one for Ruben would be this light gray, uh, slightly dropped shouldered short sleeve shirt, which says Morning Dew, which is uh, a construction company. And I think for my favorite obscure t-shirt would probably be this yin and yang camo tee which is basically just a camo pocket t-shirt with a screen print of the yin and yang symbol and below it has writing and it looks to be like little flower drawings, I don't know. But it's slightly distressed, just like most of the clothes and it's uh, more of a slimmer t-shirt again with shorter sleeves and it's more fitted. And I think one of the only outer layer pieces that Lou's seen wearing is this heavily faded red hoodie that is pretty oversized on her. It's super faded. You can see in this one photo that what the color used to look like and what it ended up being on the outside. And eventually in the movie, Lou is seen wearing this white painter jumpsuit with this navy collar and her black docks and her hair looks different. And it's a scene where Ruben's seeing her play a solo concert or a show while he's still at the shelter or uh, the center. And it's kind of this metaphor where she almost looks like she's in a spacesuit and she's drifting away and drifting away from her old self and drifting away from Ruben. And you can see that Ruben's visibly upset by it when he looks at this scene. Just played aesthetically well. It also is a symbol of what's going on with Lou and the change that she's making or that's happening involuntarily or voluntarily. Now that's going to conclude it for most of the clothing. There are a few other scenes, but that's towards the end of the movie where Megan wasn't the uh, costume designer. And to answer that question, did Megan successfully represent the style of the punk scene? I personally, I am not. Uh, this is somebody who's not in that scene an outsider, if you will. I think she pulled it off pretty well. Somebody who's in the punk scene that is a touring band member. She showed the DIYing, the sharing of clothing, uh, the style of clothing, I mean, and I genuinely think Megan did a really good job pulling this off with not a lot of money or a lot of time. And I think it was a phenomenal job and I thought the wardrobe was great. Welp, that is going to conclude this video. If you made it this far, give the video a like. Comment if you think Megan did well on representing the punk scene. Share this video with a friend, that would be huge for me. And if you wanna read any of the information or listen to any of the podcasts and interviews that I watched, it's all linked down below. If you could follow me on social media, that'd be great. D-A-N-V-E-R-H-E-Y on Instagram. Everything is linked down below for social medias. That is gonna be it for me. I'll see you soon. Take care.